tools needed for this is a screw, a flat screwdriver, but a small one, not a large one. It has to fit inside a uh, a hole that it's pretty small. Then a uh, ten millimeter wrench, wrench, and a small again a small Allen key, just like that. You notice how small the screwdriver is compared to my finger. Then you'll need the uh, nitril gloves, some uh, paper towel, a uh, gas canister, and I think that's pretty much it. So uh, in order to get access to the carburetor screw and uh, to clean it, um, you first, uh, if you happen to have already gas, uh, just release the cover, put it on the side like this, make sure the gas valve is open so the gas can flow then we need to empty the carburetor in the gas tank uh, i will drain the gas from the carburetor i'm using a bottle like this for gas you may want to be in a outdoor area so you don't accumulate gas vapors and now we're looking under the under the motor and you can see that's the bottom there's a uh, a small place and the um, the screw that gets clothed it's inside that but for now we just want to empty the gas so you see there are two screws one there and one there the center screw it's keeping this piece uh, in place so you don't want to touch this thing instead we're gonna use the side screw and it's 10 millimeters so you just use uh, something that you have in hand to undo it and the, so make sure you can catch all the gasoline so I'm not gonna complete this but uh, you may want to use here you go so that's the uh, gasoline flowing um, be patient as you can see the flow is very weak now but uh, the gas it's pretty much full with gasoline at this point so you may want to leave it for uh, about, if I remember where, well, perhaps 30 minutes or so, until all the gasoline drains. When the gas tank is empty, you may want to place back the little screw. Tighten. Tighten securely. Not too strong, but securely. Now we are going to remove the little reservoir here, this piece, so we are going to remove the center bolt. Sorry, the center bolt, this one. Careful, the gas may still spill a little bit, so you may want to catch it or put a rug something underneath. I'm not using gloves, and that's not the best idea. So it's the center bolt that keeps this thing in place. Note when you put any of those two 10 mm bolts in, back in place, do not over tighten. You just need the, there is a seal, so you just need to have that seal close, close, in, close enough so the gasoline won't leak. But you just don't need to over tighten, just give it a twist, then when it stops, just give it a little more. Uh, kick so it sits tight. Next step, we are going to remove this black plate, you need to remove this button, the chalk, you need to remove the K, probably not the K, you can leave it there, and then you have one bolt there, 10 millimeter, another one, another two there, 10 millimeter both, and there's another 10 millimeter there and 10 millimeter there. If you want to make it easier, you may remove those two bolts, 10 mm too, and lift this cover. It's easier to uh, remove the uh, black cover from under the top one. So now I'm just forcing a little bit on the top one, free the lower cover, and just slide it off this uh, chalk switch. 
which have their kind of prints on the side. And I want to unclip the thin tube. There might be uh, gasoline leaking. So make sure when you place back the small tube, rubber tube, you just securely put the clip back on. Right? Just like that, so you can clear the cover. Next, we are going to look to the carburetor and assembly. This is where the center screw for the cover was. And inside this hole, you cannot see it, but there is another screw. And it takes a flat screwdriver. And you notice that the tip is thin. It has to be thin and not too wide, so as to get inside that groove. And the tip, again, has to be thin. Um, it's not exactly very easy to get into the screw's groove, but you just may want to twist your screwdriver and press it upwards. You may want to try with both hands until it, until it kicks in place. Just like that. And then you want to unscrew that. Make sure you unscrew the screw, right? Don't tighten it. So when you finish to unscrew this screw there, you just completely unscrew it, but it won't fall from there. Most probably it won't fall. Just leave it there. Go on the other side here. Toast the black cover. Grab the Allen key. And if you look inside, I'm not sure the camera will show it. There is a small hole. I'll show you the uh, screwdriver probably. There is a small hole past this valve at the bottom there. It's not too deep inside, but it's 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 right there and I want to press down with the Allen key. Grab and put the key inside the hole. And you hear it? I just got the key inside the hole. You may see it by yourself, the camera angle is not the best. So this is actually what felt from there. The lower here it's the screw that you just unscrew from underneath. See the groove, it's there has like a small groove and this is the I'm not sure about the the right term but it's like a spray nozzle a screw with several tiny holes you want to look inside and blow air through it through each of those two uh, make sure all small holes and all inside there's a a uh, passage inside but plus those small holes and this one only has a passage inside so all this need to be completely clear and when you place it back it goes just this way you place it from underneath place this one first and then screw that guy in back in place no need to uh, over tighten it so that's it uh, put back in place everything and you should be fine to go so keep in mind you want to run your uh, snow blower thrower every probably every month during summertime uh, that's the best way I found to keep those two guys clean and free of any uh, sedimentation deposits inside. You may want to pass something thin inside. As you can see, there's a lot of kind of corrosion there. And uh, when you pull that out, you see how much stuff is on this guy. That's all from inside the screw. And there's some more so make sure you properly really clean this everything in and out uh, rub it inside or something because uh, that's the real problem in there if you have a uh, unstable idol if your idle is going up, down, up, down, there may be another issue. And then you look just here, right here at the top, this small hole. There is, you notice there's something red in there. I'll try to undo this metal shield here, it has two 10 millimeter bolts. Now that the shield is out, um, I also did undo the uh, spark cable because it's kind of in the way there's this black cover here I don't want to I don't want to remove it from there I'm not sure if I uh, I don't want to touch this I'll just pull it on the side like this bend it a little bit 
going back I'm gonna bend it back when I'm finished but now uh, everything is exposed so just using a uh, Phillips screwdriver on this you may want to remember the position of this uh, black uh, screw I think it's more uh, tightened like this but just remember how deep it goes in there to uh, just place it back in place the same way carefully this is plastic maybe if you are doing this in winter time it's gonna be a bit brittle so uh, uh, just go gently the small screw is out again very careful it's a really small plastic piece so watch out and then for the other guy the red um, this kind of red piece um, watch out I'm just trying to pry it out carefully on the sides there and there but be careful because there are uh, kind of seals on it so you don't damage it's gonna be a little bit feels like it doesn't want to come out so go gently on both sides a little bit of the time and just uh, um, work it off from there here's the red thing and there is at the bottom so that how it goes at the bottom there is a very tiny uh, tiny hole in there so I'm going to use a, a very very thin uh, needle and just uh, punch it in there so uh, it clears that hole. And by the way, when replacing this uh, red uh, red part, notice how the holes go in there. So notice that it has kind of a, um, straight uh, size. This will go just like you see in the video. So don't put it uh, correctly back in place. Do not rotate it, it like this because then the holes will not be aligned in there as it's supposed to be. Remember to place the piece back in place with the two edges uh, aligned with the side here. So it has two straight edges and two round edges. So right now I think I will have to rotate it slightly. By the way, uh, all this operation actually, you don't need to remove the fuel from the, from the blower. I just it doesn't touch the fuel lines or anything uh, just make sure you don't disconnect the lines there everything is back in place all bolts all screws are back in place uh, don't forget to connect this uh, spark wire and uh, I just want to finish this uh, video with how I fired this up so basically you need to have the run button on and basically usually what I do is I just prime it once not pushing it like this it's going to start leaking fuel it doesn't start just prime it once i'm going to depress this this uh, rubber button fully to the bottom and i want to leave let it go all of a one all of a sudden and i want to hear a small suction noise in there the the rubber makes a squeaky noise but i want to hear like something like a small suction and that means for me it got fuel inside let's try it you heard that squeak it's a small sound it's not from the rubber it's really inside so let's just give it a try but usually i will leave that uh, on on after shutting off let's try it again so again i depress it and let it go all of a sudden you heard there's a squeak inside inside the rubber let's try it again So it fires up very nicely. Usually the uh, the chalk, I think I leave it this way. I think it's open, fully open, not closing it like this. Usually I fire up and I leave it like that for all time. 